Hey, good morning, Christ Church family. We are so glad that you're joining us for worship today. Um, we had such an incredible start to our, our series last week, and we, we want to continue that excitement and just that interaction and the conversations that we we're having on our, our Facebook Live. And so this week we're diving into week number two of this three-week series called Aftermath, and we're looking at how the church began and how they were devoted to one another. And so we, uh, we hope you'll just dive right in with us today. A couple quick things. Hey, we have a great way where you can serve with us and, and serve alongside this crazy church at this crazy time. Um, next Sunday, May 3rd, we're going to actually have a food drive from 2 to 4 p.m. Now, it will be a drive-through food drive. Um, you can get on our website at FWCCC and find out all the information, uh, all the safety precautions that we have in place and that we're going to have that day to kind of keep everybody safe and to, to keep the, the social physical distancing for us too. Again, that's next Sunday, May 3rd from 2 to 4 p.m. and it will be at door one at the, the main entrance of the church. Now, if this is your first time joining us, we would love for you to text the word WELCOME to our text line at 260-202-1121. That's WELCOME to 260-202-1121. We encourage everyone to, to save this number as our Christ Church texting line. Um, you can always text the word prayer as well to this number and someone will reach out to pray with you and to pray for you. If there's a need that you can have, you can type the word need also. Um, that's if you have a physical need or a financial need at this time. That way the church can come alongside and we can help you and be there for you. Again, that number is 260-202-1121 and we would love for you to say that in, in your contacts. However, um, Jess has got some info and some updates about our CC Kids and our CC students. Absolutely. CC Kids is still plugging away, doing our thing. Um, I am currently working on curriculum bags for May. You can expect those to be delivered to your home sometime next week. Um, on Sundays, we will have our 252 and First Look videos up on the website as normal. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, some point, there will be a video from me walking through some curriculum things with the kiddos. I would love it if your kiddos could send me a video of them joining in and doing those activities. Parents, we'd love for you to do that. I want to challenge you to, to get involved with those kiddos. Take some videos, take some pictures. Um, we'd love to see your kids interacting. Absolutely. And then um, CC students, they are still meeting through Zoom on Sunday evening. I'm sorry, Sunday yes, night Sunday day. nights at 7 o'clock. Um, and then keep an eye out on their social media pages. On Monday, they will put out a schedule for the rest of the week of when they are doing fun activities, having group meetings, all sorts of things like that. So um, Sundays at 7 for small groups and teaching, and then watch out on Mondays for the rest of their week's schedule. It's been awesome just to see our kids program and our student ministry um, continue and connect and just interact with, with the students and the parents. And so please, please make that a priority if you, if you can. Um, also, we're continuing our 50 days of prayer and scripture, and so far it has been powerful. And if you haven't had a chance yet, man, we want to invite you to jump in. It's not too late. You can join us right where we're at. Those uh, devotions, those prayers, those scriptures, they go up on our website every single day. Um, at fwcc.cc. Also, they're on our social media, um, on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, just follow us and you can you can get those. And, and I would encourage you to share that with your friends, with your family. Invite them to walk along this, this journey with us as we continue to, to pray together. Um, it's pretty cool that uh, there's so many people who will be praying and reading the same scripture together uh, throughout the city and the state, throughout, throughout the country. So it's, it's powerful. Um, one more thing too, if, if you've been having a hard time uh, trying to give online, we understand, we've made it so much easier for you. Um, now all you have to do is simply text the word GIVE. Just text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to our text line at 260-202-1121 and it will take you through uh, just how you can give online um, through that. It's, it's awesome. It's, it, it's incredible. You can still give online. Uh, you can also still mail in your um, tithes and your offerings to Christ Church at 3131 Maple Crest Road, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46815, of course. But, but this text, the word give, gives you a, a different way that you can continue to trust God and support the kingdom work that He is doing here. 
um, our worship experience is about to begin, church. Uh, so go ahead, take a moment just to, to greet each other in the comment sections. Say good morning to someone, uh, and encourage someone, um, just whatever. Just We want to make this time very, very interactive. So wave to somebody, whatever you need to do. But it's going to be an incredible morning, and we are so glad that you're joining us. God bless. Hey Christ Church family, we've only got a couple minutes left before we begin our worship time together. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the share button below and let your friends and your family know about the amazing time that we are going to experience together today. Also, I want to see you type a thumbs up or raised hand emoji if you enjoyed week one and are excited about week two of our Aftermath series. It's going to be powerful. I, I know I'm excited. Our worship experience is about to begin. So go ahead, get ready to worship together, Christ Church. And always remember, the best is yet to come. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my team till I met yeah.
needed rescue, my sin was held. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future.
Good morning, Christ Church family. How are all you faith spreading, love giving, hope dealers doing this morning? I hope you're doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. If you are a guest with us, if this is your first time, my name is Jason Kimberly and I'm the lead pastor here. And we are so glad that you are a part of this. We're in week two of our series called Aftermath, and we named it that because after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, things were never the same. They couldn't be the same. They, they, they were different. They had to change. I mean, this was a huge event that had happened. And the ecclesia, the movement of God, was launched. And whenever there's a huge event, whether it's an earthquake or a war or a hurricane, or even, yes, the coronavirus, this COVID-19 crisis, there's an aftermath. There's a change. And so when everything first happened, as we talked about last week, when the Holy Spirit of God comes down and God breathes out his power and his might, the church is born. And all of that happens in the church before this movement was called the church. Before we were called Christ followers or Christians, they were called the way. Go ahead and type that word out, the way. That's how they identified themselves. So we want to look at and we want to find out what things that we want to be about. What were some things that, that they did? How did they live together? How did they interact? How did they, they come together and walk along this journey together? And, and God shows us this incredible, this, this awesome picture. Just looking at the timeline of the early church, once God's spirit falls down upon them, once his might and his power is released, this miracle happens and 3,000 people were baptized. 3,000 people surrendered to Jesus. 3,000 people declared that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And they surrendered to him as Lord and Savior, and they were baptized. And the church explodes. We get this great picture of God's people and this vision of what the church is supposed to look like and be about. And I want to say something. I want to give you a statement. I don't want to startle you. I'm just going gonna, gonna to lay this statement out there, and I'm going to back this up with God's word. The statement is simply this. I believe that the ecclesia, the movement of God, the church, the big C church is perfect. I believe that it is perfect. Now, not you and I, not, not the people, because can we be honest? We're pretty jacked up, aren't we? And we have addictions and struggles and, and our backgrounds are all rough and crazy. And, but, but this movement of God, what he created is perfect. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, come on, pastor. You're going to start off preaching and telling us this, this message, and all of a sudden you're going to just drop this lie on us? I mean, I've, I've been around Christians. I've been around religious people, and I've been hurt by them, and I've been bruised by them, and I've been broken by them, and I, I see the spots, and I see the blemishes. And you might be thinking to yourself, look, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can get totally on board with this whole thing that the church is perfect. But listen. We've got this picture of the church as it was born. We've got this picture as the Spirit falls down and, and you feel the might and the power of God moving. And God says, here's the thing. You are going to be a thing that's going to be the light for this world. You're going to show hope for this world. You're going to be hope dealers across the world. And this is beautiful. And this is wonderful. And it is perfect and it is amazing. And the function of what it is created to be is perfect. But as I step back, and, and, and I've told you before that my wife Jessica and I, we grew up in the church. So we've been around the church for a long time. And, and at times we kind of step a little back and, and we kind of look and we go, oh man, the church is kind of goofy. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I mean, there are some things that we say, some things that we do, and it's just kind of like, okay, okay, this is odd. Can we be real? A lot of the words that we use are weird, right? Like sanctification, you know, justification and, and all these bigger words. And one of the words we're going to use today kind of falls in that together. The, the word that we're, we're looking at today is, is this word called fellowship. And you can go ahead and type that out. Type out the word fellowship. It's not a, you, uh, a word that we use all the time, right? I mean, people don't come up to me and go, hey, Jason, man, we need to have some fellowship, you know? Or, or we don't say, man, we had some sick fellowship last night. Well, we, we don't use those kind of words, Right? I mean, ladies with your friends, guys with, with your, your, your buddies as you're hanging out. That's not something that we say, right? But, but here's the thing. God says this. God says they devoted themselves. God says they devoted themselves to these four things. He says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is God's word. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread, which is communion. They devoted themselves to prayer. And they devoted themselves to fellowship. 
to fellowship, to, to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to prayer, and to fellowship. This thing called fellowship, when we look at it, it's kind of a weird language. It's a, it's a weird word. And, and can I be honest with you? I think that as, as believers, as, as Christ followers, man, we use some odd language. And we use some weird things. And I saw this video um, a couple years ago. There's these couple guys, these comedians, and they were just having some fun and kind of making fun of, of the words that we use and the things that we say. And it's just, it's hilarious. And I thought it might be funny. I mean, how many of you think that we use some weird language here at church, right? Go ahead and raise your hand. Well, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of to see what they did. So here's a video. Check this out. Bless his heart. I think he's backsliding. I think I saw him drink. Yeah, but... In moderation. I just wasn't seeing much fruit. He's going down a slippery slope. How's your heart, man? How's your heart? I'm just such a words guy. It was a total God thing. I'm blessed. I've been working on my testimony. Is that secular music? We're opening with a secular song tonight. Wait, is this a secular song? Isn't she secular? Which station's the fish? 104.3, the fish. Safe for the whole family. You know he's a believer. I think he's saved. I just pray you would give him traveling mercies. Mm. Pray for all Tyler's unspokens. Mm. Echo that. Just really like to echo. Tyler's prayer, Father. I just, I echo that echo of my echo of his echo. I really feel like I'm being released from this, you know? I'm trying to be relevant. I'm just trying to be in the world, not of it. Hey, do you want to join our small group? You want to join my D group? You want to join my cell group? Community group? Access group? Accountability group? Acts 27 group? Dude, he brought it. He brought the word. That service last night rocked me. They're pretty purpose-driven. Yeah, it's seeker. Don't they do seeker service there? I feel like he's gotten really watered down. I don't feel like he really teaches the word. There's just not enough meat, you know? Are they non to non? We have a great Wednesday night supper. Let's invite some dudes over and fellowship tonight. We're gonna have a sweet time of fellowshipping tonight. Dude, we had the sickest fellowship last night. We're going to extreme. Velocity. Ignite. Yeah, I'm going to ignite. The edge. The dive. The bridge. The ramp. Fire. Courageous. Passion. Echo. Reverb. Noise. Velocity. Drive. Elevate. Radiate. 722. 635. 419. Orange. Blue. Yellow. Green. Clear. Neon. Catalyst conference this year. I don't do that because I feel like it ruins my witness. I've been struggling with that. Just, I'm really wrestling with that. I'm wrestling with a doubt. I need someone to hold me accountable. I'm really trying to be intentional with her. I'm pursuing her for sure. I'm trying to guard her heart. Guard her heart though, bro. Will you hold me accountable to that? Yeah, well bounce your ass. Bounce your ass. Dang it. Crap. Shoot. Sheesh. Frip. Darn it. What the H? Holy crap. Son of a beasting. Dude, he's really teeing me off. I'm gonna kick his A. Are you asking me right now? Not cool. I, I find that offensive. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can all kind of laugh at that. that that's some, some crazy stuff, right? It's some weird language that we, we use, right? I mean, um, I echo his echo to their echoes, and, and I, I pray for his unspoken. We, we use kind of these weird words, right? I, I feel like sometimes we're kind of wearing people out with the language that we use and the, the, the different things that we call things and, and all this. And, and God is so clear on what we're to, to be about, what we're to do. God is so clear when we read his words, we, it's, it's so evident what he's calling us to. Look at the vision that God has for us in, in Acts 2.42. And, and the incredible thing is the start of the church, they got this. They understood this. And, and it says this in Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 42. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The Lord added to their number daily being saved. This is the vision of the church. This is the vision of the church. God was like, get after this. Be all about this. This is what you want. This is what I want. This is what you need to do. D do this right here. And we look at this and we see it is perfect. Church, it's perfect. Everything that they need, they have. They have the Holy Spirit and community it is being developed. I would put this in front of you today. The ecclesia, the church, the big C, the church throughout the world is perfect at community. The church is perfect at community. You, you might have thought that last week would be the only time that you're going to learn a new language, right? But no, 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 no. See, today we're going to learn another Greek word. 
Today we're going to learn another Greek word. Why don't you go ahead and type this out? Type, I love learning Greek. Go ahead. Put a smiley face. You can put an LOL. But I love learning Greek, right? It's, it's going to be fun. We're having some fun here, right? This Greek word in Scripture is simply this. Koinonia. Go ahead and type that word. Koinonia. Koinonia. Now, now koinonia simply means this. Koinonia is fellowship with God. It's, it's fellowship with God or it's fellowship with fellow Christ followers. Fellowship with God, fellowship with fellow Christ followers. Acts 2.42 tells us that this is the thing that the church devoted themselves to. To koinonia, the fullness of what God is calling us to. The church being perfect at community. I want us to look a little deeper at, at what does this word, this word koinonia, I, I mean, when you hear it and, and this letter is being read and, and this, this is what the church is like, what, what does this word really mean? What, what does it really mean? The Greek meaning of koinonia, there's some attributes that it talks about. It says living in community together, a oneness, a commonality. There's another, I mean, it says sharing a purse together which I have nothing and no clue on that, but it says sharing a a purse together. Another meaning is sharing sharing a a mother together. Sharing a mother together. If you go up to my mom and say, hey, mom, then then I'm I'm pretty sure we're pretty tight. We're pretty close. We we know each other well, right? I mean, that's that's a close feeling. That's a commonality. We we hold something deep together. It speaks in the the depths of marriage as well. It's a commonality of something that binds people together deeply, that binds people in, in deep unity. Ultimately, it's, it's this word right here. It's interdependence. Interdependence. Fellowship, they're devoted to. Koinonia, they're devoted to. Interdependence upon one another. Now, as, as I grew up, and I was raised in this culture with, with movies and, and this subculture that um, was, was kind of about like this, this kind of macho, uh, go it alone, kind of like this machismo attitude, you know, this machismo mindset. Every one of my coaches in high school, whether it's football or baseball or basketball, were like, man, you got to do this on your own, and it's only about you, and you, man, you got to plow through it, and so you got to carry everything, you got to carry the team, and, and my dad would kind of say that every now and then, and um, man, in my era, we had like the greatest football player who ever played the game, but he played for the worst team in the history of the NFL, and they are still that bad today. Now, this, this dude was amazing. This guy's name was Barry Sanders, all right? Now, now Barry Sanders, and, and there's a picture on the screen. This guy was crazy. I mean, he could do things like nobody else, and he played for the Detroit Lions, and they are awful, and they're still awful. And if you're a football fan, go and raise your hand, man. Put, you know, give me a thumbs up if you're a football th- fan. And if you remember Barry Sanders, give me two thumbs up because this guy was incredible. I mean, you could give the guy the ball, and he would run for like 10 minutes. He would go absolutely crazy running. And and he may only get two or three yards, but he would run like 10, 20 yards backwards. He'd run sideline to sideline. Man, the the guy was like unstoppable. It was like Barry Sanders versus the world. I mean, he just, we we loved it. He was like a human highlight reel. I mean, we just were like, forget passing the ball. Just give him the ball, and let's see what happens, right? I mean, he was absolutely incredible. But he had to do it all on his own because his offensive line stunk. They were terrible. Then there's this other guy that kind of, he resonated deeply with me. This guy named Rambo. You see Rambo on the screen here. And, and man, I, I don't even know how many movies were made, but I think I heard like Rambo 20 was coming out. It's like Rambo destroys the coronavirus or something. I don't know, but it's like this guy took on everything by himself. I mean, he took on armies by himself. He, he would take each person out one by one. And he was always the last guy standing. And, and he would just do it alone. Didn't need anybody else's help. You know, and here's the thing. I, I think the, the world and culture tells us all the time this. The world and culture tells us, you do you. You look out for number one. You look out for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't let anybody else mess with you. But you focus on you and you take on the world on your own. And when I look at, at the picture of what God is telling us is perfect, when I look at what God's word says is beautiful, then I have to reject this mindset of go it alone. I have to reject this attitude of you do you or just take care of yourself because it's contrary to what God is telling us to do. It's contrary to what I was baptized into, you, to what you were baptized into. 
You see, I was baptized into community, and you were baptized into community if you've been baptized. It says we were baptized into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Genesis 1, God says this, let us make man after our own image. He doesn't say let me, he says let us. God wants community, he wants us to be in community. See, I was baptized into this promise that you will never have to be alone again. That you will never have to be alone again. That, that you are a part of something greater. That, that Jesus, in the moment that is the most important moment of your life, that, that when you stand before the Father in heaven, Jesus Christ will be standing there with you. And he says, this one here, th this one right here, he's mine. This one right here, my righteousness and my, my, my perfectness, my perfection covers this one. This one right here is mine, and, and he is taken care of. And every day up until that day when we stand face to face with God, Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us, and he is walking with us. He says, not only am I with you, but I am calling you to a greater vision. I'm calling you to be, to, to be devoted. See, the Holy Spirit comes, and fellowship erupts, church, and there is unity. And, and we step into this unity. We step into this time. And, and so often we'll say, you know what? I confess that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of the living God. I confess that. I surrender to him as Lord and Savior. I repent. I, I'll be baptized. I'll, I'll be part of the ecclesia. I'll be part of the movement of God. I'll give him my tithes. I'll give him my offerings. I, you know, I'll, I'll do all these things. I'll be obedient in all these. But, but, but this over here, see this piece right here? This is mine. You don't worry about this. See, this, this is my business, and my business is my business, and I've got it, and you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about my marriage. You don't have to worry about my kids. You don't have to worry about my struggles or my addictions or these things, these financial issues. Let me ask you something, though, church. How's that working out for you? How is that working out for you? See, Jesus says, I came for more than that. I came for this vision, this vision of fellowship, this vision of koinonia, the vision that my church would look like this. Jesus says, here's the vision of the church. Here's what you'll be about. Here's what we are about. Jesus says, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, we are inviting you to be a part of this. See, in Jesus, Jesus is inviting you to this. He's, he's inviting for us to be a part of this, to, to these four things. One, devotion to the teaching of the apostles' word. God's word. To the breaking of bread, observing communion together, to, to prayer, something that is threaded through everything that we do here at Christ Church, and to forward to fellowship. Devotion to the teaching of, of God's word, the breaking of bread, to prayer and fellowship. That is what we are called to be a part of, to, to being filled with all, to being, being filled with all what God is doing in community, in this world, in us here at Christ Church, at this moment, in this place where we have everything in common and we share everything and we, we take care of one another. Where he's inviting you to sell what you have so you can give to somebody else who has need, somebody else who has struggles. To give to God so that he can do great things. To give to the church so that the church can do great things in this community and in this city and in this world. To break bread together every day. To break bread together continually in each other's homes with glad and sincere and generous hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the capstone of this picture, the capstone of this entire thing is this. That the Lord would add to their number daily those being saved. That the Lord would add to their number daily those who are being saved. Christ Church, I, I love hearing the stories from our people. I love hearing the stories from our small groups. I love hearing what God is doing in the lives of so many of you. I love hearing sing stories about people helping each other move, helping people with groceries, helping run errands for those who are maybe in, in a spot where you can't get out or you shouldn't get out that people are, are buying gift cards and, and giving them to people who are struggling financially, that people are donating, men, donating money and giving money to others to help them in this time of need. We've had people do so many incredible things. We have prayer groups going on. We have our small groups going on. We have a prayer group on Sunday night. We have a, a Zoom group that, that meets on Thursday nights, and they pray together and they encourage one another. 
Church, listen, the doors of the church may be closed at this time, but God's ecclesia, God's church, his people are moving, and we are not stopping. We are being devoted to one another in prayer, in the apostles' teaching, in the breaking of bread, and in fellowship. You see, I love that we come together at 10 a.m. every Sunday right here to worship together, to encourage one another, to break bread, and to share God's word. It's what we're called to do. We're walking through these 50 days of prayer and scripture together through various social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, our website. If you haven't began with that with us, it's not too late. You can jump in right now, right where you're at. It's never too late to dive into God's word and to pray with and for one another. And when you do this, here's the incredible thing. You are joining voices and hearts, not only here at Christ Church, but throughout the city, throughout the state, throughout this country, throughout this world. We are devoting ourselves to God's word, to breaking bread, to communion, to prayer, and to fellowship. We pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray for our marriages. We pray for each other's children. We pray for addictions. We pray for struggles. We pray for jobs. We pray for health. We pray for all of these things, and we start getting filled with all of these things that God is doing in our lives, in our community, and we start to have everything in common together, and we share these things, and we help one another. We get together and we sell some things that we don't need so that we can give money to people who need it. We're together in one another's homes and we're breaking bread continually. We have glad and sincere and generous hearts. And we praise God and we enjoy the favor of one another. And then we see people. This is my favorite part. We see people far from God come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. We see people far from God who have been struggling and walking through life and hurting and not knowing what's going on and asking why and and, and these crises hit and and they're struggling. And we see people like that who come and see what we're doing and see the koinonia, the fellowship that we have, and they give their lives to God. They surrender to him. And they understand the perfectness of the vision of the church and the community of the church. We have everything in common because we have Jesus Christ. We have everything in common because of the blood of Jesus, and it is the common thing. It is our commonality across the board, and that trumps everything else, church. It is the greatest thing, and it pulls us all together, and it binds us all together, and it makes us one. And and I look at this vision, and we don't just pick and choose which parts that we we are a part of or which parts that we like. We are called to the entire vision. We are called to be a part of all of this. The apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, prayer, and and fellowship, all of it. We are called to experience the fullness of all that this is because of what God has shown us and given us. That's what God wants for us, his family, his ecclesia, to experience this koinonia. God says, this is good, and I want you to have this. I want you to have this fellowship, this koinonia with one another. Church, the ecclesia is perfect at community. The ecclesia is perfect at community. It really is. If we live it out, if we follow the example that we are shown right here in Acts, if we follow what God has has given to us, and, and if we surrender to him our lives, every aspect, we trust him across the board. But here's the bigger deal. The ecclesia is perfect at placing you into community. The ecclesia is perfect at placing you and I into community. It's perfect at placing each one of us into community. This idea of fellowship, this idea of koinonia is not a part of of our faith experience as individuals that we can just say, I I opt out of. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm not big on that. You know, I'm not an extrovert. This this isn't for me. I'm I'm, I'm shy. It's it's really not my deal, so I I don't want to be a part of that. Church, (laughs) there is this description of, of how this happens. There's this description of how this happens for you and for me. And look, God loves shy people. God loves introverts. God loves all of us across the board. God wants you and he needs you to be a part of this and to be in quantity and to be in fellowship with all of us. God wants you to be a part of that because there are other shy people in this world. There are other introverts in this world, in this community, in this city. And we have all got to come together together. We've got to come together to, to, to realize the perfection of, of the church and what God called us to. God in his spirit wants to place you and I in community. 
We tell you this. One of our core values is you can't do life alone. You cannot live life alone. You were not called to do that. See, there's this lie, though. There's this lie that loops in the back of our minds, right? There's this lie that, that, that Satan throws into us and, and that attacks us and attacks the body of Christ. And that lie, it, it's from an enemy who says this. It says, you don't matter. A lie from the enemy that says, you don't have worth. You don't have value. You don't need to be in Koinonia. You don't need the fellowship of others. You don't have value. Your involvement does not matter. Your fellowship, your koinonia, you being being devoted to what's happening, it doesn't matter. You're just one person. See, that's what that lie in our mind tells us and loops through. But Jesus, Jesus has something to say about that in 1 Corinthians. Jesus has something to say, and, and, and let's be honest, this is intense, all right? This is going to get intense, okay? And I'm going to read you Jesus' words all in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want you to be ready, all right? I want you to, to read all this with us together, okay? So, so take a moment, take a deep breath, and, and I want you to just type this. Let's do this, right? Go ahead and type that out. Let's do this. If you are ready to go, if, if you're all in, I want you to type, let's do this. And we're going to read God's word. We're going to read what Jesus says because God's word is powerful. Because God's word is life-changing. It, it has so much to tell us. And he's got something to say to you and to I, and he's got something to say to that lie that Satan is trying to tell us about how God, through his power and his spirit, puts you in community. Let's look at this together. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Deep breath, and here we go. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. Verse 7, now to each of you, that's pretty clear, right? Now to each of you, not to some of you, not to just a few of you, not to, to Cubs fans or Cardinals fans or to Michigan fans or Ohio State fans. It says now to each one of you, to every one of you, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, and to another a message of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Now here we go, church. Check this out. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ Jesus. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. Whether it's Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink together. Even so, the body is not made up of one part but of many. Verse 15, now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body, church. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, church. They are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, no division, no, no divisiveness, no attacking, no separation, but that its parts should have equal concern for one another. 
equal concern for each other, koinonia, loving each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it, church. Now you are the body of Christ. You and I, we are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of the body. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But eagerly desire the greater gifts, and I will show you the most excellent way. I will show you the most excellent way. Church, church, church. We are all part of the body. Church, we, we are all part of the body. You are a part of the body. You matter to God. I matter to God. It is the Holy Spirit of God and its perfect function placing you in the body of Christ for what you are supposed to do. Amen? God has created you for a certain purpose. He has created you for, for this idea, for this gifting. He has given you so many things that he desires to use you to bring glory to him. There is no doubt that God is at work. Do not doubt that God is at work in your life. Do not doubt that God created you for a purpose, that God created you and he has value. He has given you value, that you have worth. You are not trash. God does not create garbage. God created you in his image and he created you on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. We say that all the time, but I want us to understand that God created you on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. You have value. You have worth. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. He sent his son to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins and our shames and the things that we have screwed up and that we have done. God loves you that much. You have value and purpose, church. So when I stand here and I say the church is perfect, it is perfect in its function that it was created to be. It's perfect in its design. It's perfect in what it is going to complete. And it's perfect at placing you and I in it to do what we're supposed to do. You are called and designed to share the love of God, to share the hope that you have found. We talked about it a few weeks ago, but we are called to be hope dealers. We are called to be love givers and faith spreaders to share this with the world. To be obedient to the Spirit's leading. To love our neighbor. To say yes to Jesus. Every time he asks to say yes to Jesus. I talked to the guy this, this past week and he said that this year his, his goal, his prayer was just, I'm going to say yes when Jesus says, when he asks me a question, when Jesus leads me, I'm, I'm just going to say yes. Church, that is what we are called to do. To say yes to Jesus every time. When he nudges you, when, when he asks you to step out, when he asks you to trust him, to say yes to him. Church, when I was in college, Jessica and I were married, and we were newly married, and we had Kirsten, and she was young, and we went to this, this church of about 300 people in this little town called Wilkinson. It was a great place, a great community. We, we would drive about an hour from Indianapolis, our, our marriage student housing in Indianapolis, to, to get to this church. And, and um, man, just to serve and be a part of it. And we wanted to be a part. I, I played the drums, and, and, and my wife Jessica sang on the team. And, um, man, we, we, we didn't have anything. Um, we were dirt poor. Um, we... <laughs> We would celebrate and have a big night where we'd buy a $2 uh, large one-topping pizza from Papa John's, and that was our, you know, kind of our splurging. And we'd have like 10-cent Tuesday taco, you know, like Taco Tuesday, 10 cents each, and, and it was incredible, you know. Um, we, we ate a lot of ramen noodles and, and peanut butter and jelly. But, but every Sunday, um, we'd go to this church, and, and there's this guy named Doug Cup. And Doug was this incredible man. He was a deacon. I took, I took piano lessons from his wife, Joanne, for over seven years. And uh, my, my sisters took piano lessons from, from him, too. And, and so he knew me, and he knew our family so well. And, and every Sunday, Doug would come up to me, and he, he'd put his arm around me like this, you know, and he'd, he'd stick out his hand, and he'd shake my hand. And, and, and as he did, he'd slip me a $20 bill. He'd slip me a $20 every, every Sunday, and, and he'd hold on, and, and he'd just look me right in the eyes, and, and he'd say, Jason, he said, we're, we're all a part of the family of God. We're all a part of the family of God, and that means that you're a part of my family too. And, 
And Doug would say, I know that God has got something that he is doing, and it's going to be something amazing in your life, Jason. God is doing something amazing in your life, and right now he's telling me that you just need a little help to keep the faith. That you need just a little help to keep the faith, and you're going to get there. And he said, I have learned to always be obedient to that Spirit's leading. I've learned to be obedient to the Spirit's calling. And he'd say, Jason, remember, you just have to be obedient. Just say yes every time God calls you. Say yes to the Spirit of God. Trust him. And he will never steer you wrong. And he'd just squeeze me, squeeze my hand, and give me a little kiss on the forehead. It's not the money that I remember. It's not the money that I'm most thankful for for Doug. It's the love that he showed me. It's, it's the love that he had for me and for my family. And it was his obedience to God. His desire for us to be a part of his family. His koinonia, his fellowship. His ecclesia. He, here's this, this old man, this deacon. This man of God who just loved on me and he loved on my family consistently in our small group that we were part of, and they didn't know our financial situation. I was a private person about that. I still am today. I don't let on when things are, are difficult, we're struggling. I struggle with that. But, but, but they knew, they, they felt this leading from God, and they would buy us diapers, and they'd buy us formula. They'd give us some money for gas. All these different things, because they, they man, we spent time together praying, we spent time together encouraging and, and reading God's word, we spent time breaking be- bread and, and taking communion, and we spent time helping each other out. We, we were in koinonia, we were in fellowship, we, we were together. And when I think about that, when I think about those things, and I think about what, what's happening here at Christ Church, what's happening in my family, and, and this church coming around us, and coming around one another, when I think about these things, I, I look at this and I, and I just say, the church is perfect. The church is perfect in what it's supposed to do. The, the church is, is perfect in what we're supposed to be. That the church is amazing. And, and when we come together and when we're obedient to where God is placing us and what he is calling us to do and in the part of the body that we are called to be, church, it is powerful. It is life-changing. It, it, is, it is beautiful. In fact, it is eternity-changing for so many lives. Because they see the love of Christ in us and they see the the, the fellowship, the koinonia that we have and that we take care and we provide and they want to be part of that. They want to have that feeling. They want to sense that. They want to see that. They want to to have that hope themselves. And we go back to Jesus hanging on the cross, right? The the very last thing that Jesus says, and we talked about this on Easter in in Greek, was this this word, tetelestai. To tell us that it is finished. To tell us that it is done. They, they would put that word, stamp that word, to tell us that on papers. And when you, you bought a piece of property or, or you own that property, they stamp on there to tell us that you own it. It's yours. It's been bought and paid for. And Jesus says this, you and I, we have been bought and paid for. You and I have been bought and paid for by the blood of Christ, that it is complete, that it is finished, that we are purchased. Amen? That we have hope because of what he did on the cross. And here's a crazy thing. Jesus, he spoke multiple languages, but the language that he spoke the most was Aramaic. Aramaic. You see, tetelestai is the Greek word, but the word that Jesus said on the cross in Aramaic was the word kala. Go ahead and type that, kala. Kala is Aramaic for tetelestai. And, and kala has two meanings. One, kala, tetelestai, it is finished. And the second meaning is this, my bride. My bride, the last thing that Jesus says hanging on the cross is, it is finished, my bride. And he's looking at you and he's looking at me and he's saying, it is finished, hanging on that cross, it is finished, my ecclesia. My koinonia, my fellowship, my brothers, my sisters. This is the way that Jesus sees us. That we are his, that we are are, are that bride. And and I've done many weddings, church. I have done quite a few weddings. And I stand beside that groom. And when that door opens, when the mother of the bride stands up and that door opens and the bride starts to come down. And that young man 
is in awe. And many times I hear them say, that's my bride. That's my bride. See, Jesus is saying, it is finished. It is finished, my bride. And the work of salvation is completed. Our Savior has won the perfect redemption for all of us, that we have been ransomed once and for all by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the unblemished Lamb of God who was sacrificed for each one of us, for you and I, for those who are watching, for those who aren't watching, those throughout the city, those throughout this world. He died for every single one of us. And on that cross, Jesus said, that is my bride, and she is beautiful. She is perfect, and I'm coming back for her. And we might be bruised, and we might be beat up, and we might be broken, and we might be hurting. We, we might have addictions, and we might have struggles, and we might have all these things that, that we go through. But church, he says we are his ecclesia, that we are part of his koinonia, that we are part of the fellowship. And according to his promise, he's coming back. And according to his promise, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Church, he is inviting you and I, and he is calling each one of us to be devoted to the apostles' teaching, to be devoted to the breaking of bread, to communion, to be devoted to prayer, and to be devoted to koinonia, to fellowship. Would you pray with me? Father God, we come before you and we thank you that Jesus Christ gave his life for us. That he and, and, and the, the Father in heaven, God and the Holy Spirit, created this thing called the church, the ecclesia, the movement, and he created it perfectly. And he calls us to this great vision to be in fellowship with one another, to be in the word of God together, to be in prayer together, to be, to be breaking bread and taking communion together. And we are so thankful, God, for his spirit and for your, for your heart, for your people. Lord, may we, may we live lives that honor and glorify you. May we be the ecclesia that you called us to be. May we live our lives in such a way where we sell things to help others, where everyone has what is needed, where we take care of one another, where we have favor with all people, where people outside the wall see what is happening, and that, Lord, as your word tells us, that you will add to our number daily those being saved. Lord, we have seen 16 baptisms, 16 people give their life to you this year, and we celebrate. Come on, church. But you're not done, and there are more people who still need to surrender to you as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray whatever that next step is, that they would take that and they would surrender to you today. I pray and I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Church, we're going to take this moment and we're going to share in communion together. I'm going to grab my cups over here. And we're going to take this time. And I just want you to take the cracker or the bread that you have right now. And I want you to remember the body that was given for us. That, that Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body given to you. May we remember and celebrate that together today. And then Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for you to wash away your sins, to wash away your shame, to cleanse you, to make you perfect. This is my blood that is poured out for you. Take and drink it and remember. So let's take this together. Church, may we always remember his sacrifice and the showing of his love for us. Let's sing this song together. Let's praise our God. Now let's just worship the only name that is worthy, Jesus, our Lord and Savior.
come together and lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Satan wants to call you by your sins, but God wants to call you by your name. A son, a daughter, a child of his. We are who he says we are. We are not who the devil says that we are. But we are forgiven and we are not forsaken. God promises that. So let's lift this up together and sing to our God. Amen. Come on, church. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. Oh, I am who you say I am. Come on. I am chosen. to say thank you so much for joining us for worship today. God is doing some incredible things in us and through us, and I'm excited to see what he has in store. I want to invite you to continue to walk this 50 days of prayer with us as we continue to, to dive into his word and just cry out to him with our prayers and open our hearts to him. If you haven't joined, it's not too late. You can get on our website at fwcc.cc, or you can find these on our Facebook page, both our community one in our public page. We want you to enjoy this, this walk with us, these prayers, these scriptures. And, and just to remind you, when you do that, you're joining so many other people and, and we're coming together as one church. I also want to encourage you to continue to trust God with your tithes and your offerings, putting him first, knowing that he will provide and that he will take care. You can do that on our website at fwcc.cc and just click on the donate tab. Or you can mail in your checks or, or, or your money to us at the church at 3131 Maple Crest Road, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46815. We've also made it a little bit easier for you to, to give as well as you can also text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to our text number. And that number is simply 260-202-1121. That's 260-202-1121. Again, you can text the word give and, and you'll be able to make a donation that way. There are multiple ways that you can give to God and give to the kingdom work that is happening in and through Christ Church. Remember, God is not done with us. He created you on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. And the best is yet to come. God bless and have a great week, Christ Church.